I think it was like a year ago I started bragging about how much the, the Jeep hasn't left me stranded ever. And ever since then, man has it decided to change that. So here we are. I'm going to get her loaded up and put the TDI Toyota to work again. Uh, it lost power, kind of sputtered off and on a little. I'm guessing this is my fault, probably a plugged fuel filter. So we'll go ahead and get it home and, and see what what's going on. Hopefully we can get it on the trailer here. I kind of parked pretty good, should roll right on. And yeah, we'll go through just troubleshooting a no start on an ALH. guys well I'm really suspecting a fuel filter plug on this thing being I've been using some waste motor oil and I have been filtering it pretty well but I expected it to just plug up filters faster and I don't actually remember the last time I put a filter on this Jeep so anyway but when you're diagnosing a no start on an ALH the first thing I like to check is just see that the computer's functioning so we'll get the key on here and get her hooked up 
activate there and as expected it is definitely connected and showing everything like we want it to so I'll go ahead and turn it off and on back again just double check with whatever you want a test light or whatever but get in here and and check the oh, shut off solenoid here and actually I don't know if I do see power there it's looking like I don't we have no light bulb. So let's do a little more digging here. All right, never mind. I always forget that the, the ECU turns the shut off solenoid right away, turns it off. So you got to check it real fast. And then it turns back off again. So anyway, that checks out all the electrical so that means we have a fuel issue so first thing i'm going to do is pull the fuel filter out i've got her mounted right here so we'll get her pulled out and then we will need to re-bleed the system because it probably sucked itself dry all right guys we got the new fuel filter in you can see there the the other one was pretty well sucked empty so i have a feeling that's what happened but anyway, um, I don't have a lift pump on the Jeep right now. So I was going to show you guys how to get an air compressor and pressurize the gas tank. So you want to take this return line off. So this is going to be your one that goes back to the tank. And you're going to want to plug that. And then you can actually run this one out to a tank or something. Um, I'll probably get a hose to put on it, but anyway, you want to get that and then you just slowly pressurize the tank and it will fill the fuel filter and then the injection pump and then it'll start coming back out the return. So we'll go ahead and try that and see if we can get this thing, get this thing bled. All right, so I didn't really get any good fuel coming out clear to the return like I thought I would. But I do have, I had fuel pushing out clear to the to the injection pump, so I did fill that up. Um, and I, th or at least I filled the filter. And so we'll see, I'm gonna crack the injectors and see if we can get some fuel coming out now. Um, just see if that worked. Being it wasn't my exact outcome I was expecting.
think we're getting somewhere, guys. I do believe the um the pressurizing the fuel tank did work so that's a plus um I mean worst case if you did run out of fuel on the side of the road you could bring a bring a compressor with you or something that it was already pressurized and I probably had enough to get by so so that did work, and she's running again, so that was obviously the issue, I think. We'll get her out on the road and verify, but it would not start at all, so it had clearly sucked itself dry of fuel. So, there we go. Fuel filter. Make sure you guys change it. I really don't know how long I had that other one on there. It may have been upwards of 20,000 miles. So, I'm going to call that the culprit for now until we, we get it out on the road and test it again. So, that's it though. Thanks for watching.